Hey everybody, I'm BuilderDude35 and today I'm going to be teaching you how to use array operations with EV3G. So, the array block. It's a pretty cool feature of the EV3 programming software. It's a pretty complex piece of programming, but it's very essential for things like programming in WRO. Today I'm going to teach you all about the array block, how an array works, and how you can use it, and how it works for WRO. So first you need to know how an array works, like what it does. An array is essentially a means for your robot to record and store multiple data points as a list or an array. And each of these data points, as you should know for this tutorial, is called an element. So I'm going to be referring to each of the data points in an array as an element. So now I'm going to jump onto my computer and open up my EV3 software and show you the features of the array and how they work. All right. The first thing you'll need to know is that the array block is located under the data operations section. After we drag out an array block, we see that the four operating modes are append, read at index, write at index, and length. In append mode, what the array block does is it adds an element or another data point to the end of an array. In this array in category, you're going to choose an existing array, and in value, you're basically telling the array what value that you want to be added to the end of the array that you selected at array in. At read at index, what it does is it gets the value of a specific element in the array, and it basically reads that and then it can bring it to somewhere else. So the array in, I explained that before, is the current array that you have that you want to use, and index specifies which of the elements in the array you want it to use. Now, when you enter 0, that's the first element in the array. When you enter 1, that's the second element. 2 is the third, and so on. And the value is the value of the selected element, what, what it's you know, worth, and it's going to bring that out via data wire. Write at index is similar to read at index. You use array in and index to select the array and element, respectively. But Instead of reading the value, it allows you to select a specific element that you want to be changed. And what you do is you enter the value in manually, and that's what the selected element is going to be changed to. And the array out creates a new array with a new changed element, and it re leaves the current array with the unchanged element as a separate array. And lastly, we have length, which simply outputs the number of elements in an array. Keep in mind that any array can be set to either numerical or logic mode. In numeric, it's obviously some kind of number, and in logic, it's true or false. And depending on which of these you choose, you can actually plug in a sensor to the appropriate array port, and it can write, say, the data to be appended to the end of the array. Now, what you're going to have to do to be able to write and then read this array later in the program is wherever you see this array out tab, what you're going to have to do is take out a variable block that's set to write either logic or numeric array, depending on which type of array you're using. And you're going to pull this array out data wire and plug it into that variable. Now you're going to create an array with whatever name you desire, and now you can start working on your read operation. And for your read operation, basically what you're going to do is in another part of the program, you're going to take a variable, but this time set it to read, and make sure it has the same name of the variable that you wrote before. Now, the last thing that you're going to do is plug in the variable into an array that's set to read at index. The variable's going to plug into the array in section. You're going to select the element that you want to be read off of the array, by using index on the array block, and then you're going to take the value data wire and plug that into wherever that data needs to go. So the last thing I'm going to tell you is how we use arrays in real life. Now, real programmers programming real things will use arrays to simplify their program so they don't need to keep programming the whole big thing over and over again. But the focus of this tutorial is WRO. As you can see, I have my WRO robot here. So basically, there, uh, the examples I can illustrate to you are in Perl Diving, you have those cubes where you have to read the color off of the cubes, and off of that, your robot has to determine how many pearls to deposit into each zone. So you use an array to record the color off of each cube and to store that as a data value. 
in Treasure Hunt, the Junior High Level Challenge, what you're given at the beginning is a map key, and your robot uses its color sensor to read the map key and store each value for the color. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how the Senior High Challenge works, but um, I'm pretty sure arrays are involved there. So thanks for coming by and watching my tutorial today. There's going to be more WRO tutorials like this every Thursday for a few more weeks. And be sure to submit your idea if you would like to see it become a tutorial. So thank you, and I'll see you next week. Bye, guys. So the array Brock. Brock? No.